everyone and welcome to my channel. This is my first video ever and I'm extremely excited. This video is in conjunction with the Glitter Girls collaboration. This is our Christmas collaboration. These are the nails that I designed for that set. And I'm going to show you how to recreate these using all of these products. Let's get started. The products we'll be using today are assorted Madame Glam glitter polishes, Madame Glam's Perfect White, the base gel, no wipe top coat, some sugaring gel, gold chrome, some rhinestones and iridescent crystals, as well as some glitter flakes, a charm, some stamping plates that are Christmas themed, a monocle stamper from Maniology, used to be Bundle Mon Monster, and some stamping polish from Clear Jelly Stamper. The colors for these set are Perfect White, Patrick's Favorite, which is a beautiful glitter green. The middle finger is chest to chest. The ring finger is it's not you, it's me. And on the pinky, aside from the rhinestones, I used Silver Magic as the base coat. I will take this set here. I'm going to apply the base coat and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I have given each of these a base coat with Madame Glam's base coat. Then I've given two coats of polish to each one of the nails. On this nail, the glitter is very fine and it is a little sheer. So I actually gave a base coat of Madame Glam's Perfect Green and then two coats of the green glitter polish Patrick's favorite to achieve this opacity. Next up we will get started with the nail art. That's the fun part. For the nail art we will first work on the thumbnail. I have removed the other nails so that I can focus on one nail at a time. Uh, what I neglected to mention earlier is that on top of all of the nails I also have a no wipe top coat. The Madame Glam's no wipe top coat. Makes it nice and smooth and prepares it for any other treatment that you're going to give it. Now, I learned the hard way if you'll notice these have little pixie crystals these things go everywhere so to minimize the clutter and the mess I just simply use the top of a plastic container so that when they roll they don't go further than this area hopefully for the base for the crystals to get them to stick, I am using UR Sugar. I got this from my local nail supply store. And it's basically just a thick gel. It's much thicker than a base coat. Uh, I found that when I used a base coat, the crystals tended to um, slide all over the nail. So just a thin layer, thin enough to catch the crystals and have them stick to the nail. So we will grab some here. It's nice and thick. And 
and just a small thin layer across the entire nail. It's extremely sticky. Make it nice and smooth as possible so that you can get even coverage and even distribution of your crystals. I think one more little dip should do it. This is also the product I use to put on rhinestones. Now, if I were doing this on a real client, I would use probably a builder gel used mixed with a top coat uh, to put the crystals on. But I will be using this same product on the pinky nail to adhere all of the rhinestones the crystal rhinestones. Make sure you have an even coverage. Do not cure at this point. I'll put my brush down. I'll put it here so that it doesn't get stickiness everywhere. And that doesn't want to work. Oh, I'll have to clean up. Move this over. I was so excited to get my YouTube channel started. Just couldn't get everything in real life or my everyday life situated so that I could do this. But I finally got things started and I joined the wonderful group of the Glitter Girls. They've happily accepted me into their group and I will be doing collaborations with them on a regular basis. I hope that you will share this video and post it, the link, post the link on your Instagram feeds and get the word out so that I can share all of my knowledge and creativity with others. So back to the nails. Basically I just took and tipped the little crystal bottle over and you'll see them start to stick to the nail. You can do it carefully. You take your time with this and you won't make a mess. They tend to want to spill out very quickly. So I try to get as close as possible to the nail without knocking into it. The crystals are starting to go into the little container. They are getting on my mat as well, but at least some of it's controlled. And so you just pour a bunch of it. Another alternative would be to transfer these to a pot and turn the nail over upside down. But I like the randomness of applying the crystals using this method. I tried a spoon, one of the spoon tools, and that just took forever. I find that you can just pour them out like this and that's fine. There's a little spot right here. got such a pretty shine. There's little little shards in here or little crystals in here as well, tiny ones. Not just the little round beads. And as you can see they're getting everywhere. Now I just take simply take my finger and just press down a little. Watch being careful. You be careful where you press because some spots are still sparse and there are no crystals attached to it. I think this is one of the longer nails. The other nails don't take as long to do. If you want even coverage, make sure you catch the edges. Now if you were to do this on an actual client, you may want to limit the amount of 
the sticky gel that you put on and not get so close to the edge. But since this is not a real nail, and it's just for practice, there we go. Perhaps if I used a bigger lid, I would have been able to catch everything. But I'll just take a brush and sweep it away before we move on to the next nail. Now, once they're all adhered, I don't know if you can see that. Nice little even coverage. Press them down evenly. You don't want any of them sticking up. And I'm not getting any gel on my hands because of the way that I'm handling it. You don't press hard. You press just enough to push them into the sticky gel. And because we didn't put a huge thick layer, there's none oozing out of the nail either. And now we cure. I'm not sure. This doesn't have any instructions. It was just something I picked up at the nail store. So I like to cure this for 60 seconds just to make sure that everything is adhered to the nail and that it's cured completely. Being that the crystals are clear, the light should penetrate without problem. I'm going to cure these and come back clean this mess up and come back to do the second nail. Now that the nail has been cured, it's got a texture to it, but it's nice and smooth. There's no little crystals sticking up. Everything came out even. I don't know if you can make that out in camera. And we're ready to move on. We'll set that one aside. Next up is our index finger, which has an ornament. Let's see if I can get this off of here to show you. It has an ornament that I used a stamping plate to create and a little charm, almost like a bow hanging on the string. So we're going to recreate this one. Put this back on. Love this flexi hand. It's very economical and it works wonders. I like to create the nails. Sometimes I create them on the flexi hand, but I like to create, create the nails on this little stand because it gives me the freedom to pick things up and sometimes when I'm not actually practicing acrylic which this is wonders, wonderful for because then you can separate the fingers as you would a reg, real client. But when I'm just doing nail art, I like to use these little base that I got from Clear Jelly Stamper. You can also get them on the internet. Um, I got them as a kit, as part of the stamping kit. And speaking of stamping, when I'm stamping, I like to use gloves because stamping can be messy. When you're wiping the plates, the polish gets all over your fingers and especially if you're doing black stamping or darker colors, it gets all up in your sidewalls and your cuticles and it's hard to get it out. And sometimes it doesn't all come out and you ruin the little manicure you do have. So I put gloves on. I also like to use a paper towel so that I can wipe my scraping card off and my stamper as well. I do have clear jelly stampers um, sticky pad. You can use a lint roller. The technique I use 
you tend not to have too much of a mess on your stamping plate anyway so let me get all this ready we will be using clear jelly stampers white stamping polish it's highly pigmented this is their polish number two the image that we will be using today is this ornament right here from Mu Yu's festive collection plate number 18 and I have an interesting technique which I learned from Clear Jelly Stamper I'll put the link below to their YouTube channel they're also on Instagram my technique that I like to use <clears throat> is you put the polish in one direction so I'm going from my left to my right you're liberal with it you don't need to overdo it left to right and then when you scrape you scrape in the opposite direction so from my right to my left you don't need to scrape more than once because it'll pick up the image properly then you roll in a completely different direction and it picks up the image quite perfectly. There's fine lines in this image and it picked it up. Now there's a, the one next to it also got picked up. So I take my stamping card, the scraping card, and just clean that off. I would not recommend putting acetone on these stampers. It can damage the head over time, the stamping head. Then you place the image, and in this case, I'm going to place it about three quarters of the way down to give room for that charm. Put it in the middle of the nail, three quarters of the way down. Apply even pressure, roll it slightly, and lift. And you should have the image. There's nothing left on my stamper to clean off. The image has completely transferred to the nail. Now, that string, instead of hand painting it, the little string that's at the top of the ornament, I can extend it. I just have to pick up the ornament string from the plate itself. So I will take some acetone and some lint-free wipes and just clean off my plate. Move this out of the way. I like to use a circular motion because then the acetone gets in there. Now the, the plates tend to get a little cloudy because of the acetone. If you flip it over and use a little bit drier side, it takes most of it off. If it doesn't come off 100%, I recommend using a little bit of alcohol or gel remover. Uh, like Young Nail Swipe or something. I like to buy these alcohol prep pads. You just tear it open, use it, done. No need to use all of your lint-free wipes. No need to waste extra alcohol from your dispenser. And it serves its purpose. So for this, I am going to, it already has a line started, but I'm going to look for one that has a thicker ornament string that I could use. Now, this one right here has a thicker line and a heart and an extended line above that. That is what I will use because I will put the charm right over where the heart is and I, you can still see the rest of the string on top of it. So let me get my polish. Again, I go from left to right. Put a little bit too much on there. Scrape from right to left. Wipe your card off so that you don't have to wipe it with acetone. And roll your image. And it picked up the perfect line, heart line. Now, I don't need this little ornament that came out next to it. I just need that. 
and there you go. So now I take that and put it on and line it up because you can see through this, which these are great. You line it up. Nice and straight and you put even pressure and you roll it off. We now have a string with a heart that actually marks where I'm going to put the charm. Let me clean off my plate. I'm done with my stamper. It is completely clean. I don't even need to clean it off. Take my acetone with my lint-free wipes. And this plate is ready to use again. Oops, I just smudged it. I put a little more acetone. Again, you can take an alcohol pad and remove the remainder of the excess. It'll clear up the plate. Good as new. Good as new and ready to use for the next time. I'll set that aside. Now this has had time to dry and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a coat of no wipe top coat to protect the stamping image. When I go to put my charm onto this I don't want it to fall off. So now you just put a nice little even layer it does not smudge because you have given your image time time to dry. Put this in the lamp. The good thing about Madame Glam polishes is they cure in 30 seconds. Set your light. Clean up my area a little bit because we're going to put this charm on next. The charm I've chosen is a little bow. A little bow to make it look like give a little give a little bling to that nail. Okay. I'm going to be using the sugaring gel again. It's nice and thick. What it does is it keeps my charm from floating all over the nail. Now, when I do charms, I, t I like to use this dotting tool. It doesn't have a ball at the end. It's very pointy. I pick up a nice generous amount. Again, this is nice and cured. I pick up a nice generous amount of the gel onto the end of it. It's nice and thick. It's almost like builder gel. I'm going to put a nice dollop right where I want the charm to be. And that heart that was on here from the stamping image is what gave me the area to pinpoint. I can just wipe this off immediately wipe it off so it doesn't accidentally cure and my tool will no longer be pointy. <laughs> and I take my charm. You can do it with tweezers. I'm going to remove my gloves so I can feel the charm in my fingertips. Now, I have a flash curing light. I'm going to place the charm on the nail. I'm going to hold it in place with one hand 
and I'm just going to flash cure it just to set it and then I will put it in my lamp for the full 60 seconds. So place the charm where you want it to be. Take your flash cure lamp. These things are wonderful. This one happens to be from Enel Couture. You can pinpoint exactly what where you want it to be. It's nice and centered because of that heart I can tell exactly where I wanted it to be. And you can feel it getting hard and not moving on the nail. This charm may be a little different, difficult if it was on a real client because of the fact that it's not curved to the nail. But for the purposes of this design It was going to do just fine. See, it's still movable. So I'm waiting until it's a little bit more stiff. And it's not going anywhere. It's covering up that heart. Make sure you get all areas. And that's it. And now I will stick it in the lamp for 60 seconds. And I will be right back to show you the finished nail and clean up this area. And there you have it. It's cured. It's not, it's, on, it's not going anywhere. 60 seconds. Did the trick. The ornament clearly shows up. I don't know if you can make that out on camera. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. In the light. The ornament stamping came out perfect. So on to the next nail. The next nail is the middle finger. Again, this is another one that the little shards kind of cause a little bit of a mess. So I'm going to go ahead and bring back my paper towel that I used for the stamping. And put that in place. Put the nail on it. Now for this, we are going to be using these cute little firework looking beautiful little sprinkles. They're almost like mylar sprinkles. Now, they do get everywhere. I accidentally tipped over the pot when I was doing the original set. <laughs> Boy, that was a mess. I had to pick it all up and try, try to catch all of those shards. Go. Now, for this, I don't need the thick gel. For this, I can simply use, again, no wipe top coat. Just need something to stick them into. You don't need a huge thick layer either because they're very light. And I actually just sprinkle them on with my fingers. You will see in a moment. So I'm going to apply a nice thin layer, enough to catch all the little shards, the little mylar sprinkles I'll call them. There you go. Now you don't need to take a spoon, you don't need to do anything fancy. Just a little pinch here and there between your fingers. Pick up enough so that you can move them around. And just drop them onto the nail until you achieve the look or the opacity that you want. I just want a nice little sprinkle effect on the nail. You're going to get pieces that are sticking out. We can file those off in a minute. I'll show you. Once we cure it, you just file off a little bit. Apply another little liberal layer of top coat and you're good to go. The hollow on these sprinkles is amazing. I have these in a few different colors, but I don't know, I hopefully you can see that. How beautiful the color is on these. Now, I'm going to go ahead and press these in 
on the side. I'm going to close these so that they don't tip over again like they did when I was doing the original set. And I'm going to stick them in the lamp for 30 seconds while I clean up the rest of this paper towel. Because basically this nail, this nail is done. I'm having trouble with this top. I got all of these things. These, I believe I got these sprinkles at Michael's. There we go. I didn't put it on straight. I tap off the extra. Don't want to get this in my lamp. Okay. There we go. And they all look pretty even. And I don't see any real gaps on the nail. Anything that's noticeable, I rather. I'm going to put this in my lamp for 30 seconds. And while that's curing, I'm going to carefully fold this up. Because like I said, they do get everywhere. So I don't want them escaping. Now there are some on my nail table. That's where your trusty alcohol prep pad comes into play. Because anything wet would actually pick up. Let me give that one last little cure. I did put it for 30 seconds. Wipe this down and it will pick up all the little glitters. So without having to use any excess alcohol or leaving it stuck to my silicone mat. That's the one thing about the silicone mat. All those little glitters and everything stick to it. And that's why I put the layer of paper towel in there. So that it doesn't get all over. That's good enough. Pick them all up. Pretty much. The nail is done. And we're ready to move on. Now, it does have a little bit of a textured feel. Again, see I feel a little, a little scrape there. So I'm going to take a fine file. This is a 600-400 grit. Anything fine. A buffer would even work. And I'm just going to file this down a little. Just to remove all the little pointy pieces that stuck up from the nail. Thankfully, it was only one or two, but I'm going to do this evenly so that I can just go in with my top coat. You don't want to file too much, which is why I use a buffer. Because the glitter is still technically on the top. So, wipe off a little bit of that. Take my alcohol. Put a little bit of alcohol in the towel. Just wipe off the extra powder. You can already see the nail coming together. Take a, one more layer of top coat. Nice thin layer just to kind of seal it all in. Took off too much. There we go. You can feel the brush sticking to the nail then you took off too much. There we go. Close that. We'll put that in the light for 30 seconds and I'll be right back to show you the finished product and get ready for the next one. Okay, so we're back and the nail is done. It's got a nice smooth top coat. I put these here. So we've got three of them. For this next nail we're going to do a chrome effect and then we're going to stamp on top and apply just a couple of crystals and key points. So I will take and I'm going to give this another layer of top coat just so that it's fresh from the lamp because that's when the chrome works the best. At least I found it works best. And I have just a little applicator and chrome also makes a mess. So let's bring back that paper towel. Let's bring back 
with a paper towel, put the nail, get a no wipe top coat. Give me a comment below. Um, I had made huge purchases over Black Friday and I will be doing a bunch of unboxing videos. This is my first video. And I would really appreciate some positive feedback, constructive criticism. For those of you that are used to watching videos on the internet, so that I can start making improvements from the beginning. That way I can bring you what you want to see. But I will be having some unboxing videos. When I say huge purchases, I don't know if you've seen my Instagram, but I took a photo of it. Maybe I'll insert a photo in the video if I can figure out the editing on that. And um, so you can see exactly how huge the purchase was. Let me get this off of here. Okay, there we go. See the chrome's already getting everywhere. A little chrome will go a long way, so you really don't need much. I just simply take this little dollar store eyeshadow applicators, tap lightly into your chrome powder. I tap off the excess a little and on a freshly cured nail all you have to do is rub. It does the work for you. I love doing chrome nails. They always come out so smooth and if you do it on a no wipe top coat it really gives you that chrome effect. You can also do burnished nails if you do it on a regular top coat. It has a sticky inhibition layer. And when you do it there, it gets almost like a textured look. But for the purposes of today, we're going to use this chrome effect. And I think that that looks gorgeous. Could have left it just like that, but I love nail art. I love stamping. So we're going to go back to our trusty stamper. Now for the stamping, again, we're going to be using Clear Jelly Stampers White. My Bundle Monster or Maniology, as they are called now. Stamping Head. Monocle. It's called the Monocle. And for this one, we're going to be using this little cluster right here of snowflakes on Moo Yu's festive collection plate number 02. Get my scraping card. Put my gloves back on. Again, see I didn't get any on my nails the last time. On my hands, didn't make a mess. Paper towel and gloves. Trial and error. I've made messes on my silicone mats and it's a nightmare to clean up. So this always works for me to use. How many fingers do I have? I can't get the glove on. This makes a quick cleanup. So everything's ready. And again, we do the same. Polish in one direction, scrape in another, roll in another. Get up on the nail, rock it a little bit after you position it and it should come out perfect. It, it hasn't failed for me yet. So I'm using this cluster here just because they're, they're tight and I can get several of them on the nail. Several of them on the nail at the same time. So now I will take and scrape in the opposite direction. These are all picked up. Wipe off my card. Pick up the snowflakes. Look at how clear that came out. 
take the nail before the polish dries, position them over the nail, try to get them evenly spaced. I'm going to show you another trick. I didn't get to use all of the snowflakes. There's three of them that are still whole. And up here, I, the full image didn't come out. So I find one that is a little bit more opaque. Press that down. And I cover up that particular snowflake with the other one. Tap it down. And if you wanted to put a tiny little piece on the edge of the nail, which I think I will do, I'm going to take a partial one. And just get that going on the tip of the nail. Now my nail is chrome covered in snowflakes. Now, there's a tiny piece here that doesn't really need to be there. And because I used a no wipe top coat, I can easily remove that. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'll take some of my wipes, clean off my plate. Just take a few wipes some acetone. You clean up along the way. You tend not to uh, have a mess later on. And clean off the plate. This is why I like to work one nail at a time and not just have all of the supplies out getting in the way, making a mess on the table, cluttering. I like my table to be Clutter free. My plate's good to go. I will wipe them with alcohol before I put them back in their little jackets. And then I know I wiped this off on the paper towel, but one last clean because we're done with the stamping for today. Wipe this down nice. Get all the edges. Your card is good as new. Now, this. You can clean it off with a lint roller or a piece of scotch tape, anything sticky. I have this cute little gadget here. There, it's a stamping pad. Uh, it's like a lint, sticky. It's like lint roller sheets. And you can get a lot of use out of this surface area. You just roll your stamper on it and it comes clean. The stamping polish stays on the lint-free wipe. And when it's full, you just peel it off and throw it away. And you're ready for the next one. Another cute item, fantastically useful item from Clear Jelly Stamper. I don't know if you can tell, I'm a big fan of Clear Jelly Stamper products. I'm going to show you my collection of polishes, and that was in one of the purchases I made in Black Friday, during the Black Friday sales. So you'll be seeing that soon as well. So now I get all of this out of the way. And the next thing I'm going to do is just apply some iridescent crystals that I have to the tiny crystals to the center of some of the flo uh, snowflakes. So I'll take a few, just a few, and pour them out so that I can keep them and, and look at them. Okay. They're beautiful. The way that they, they shine. I don't know if you can see this on camera. It's gorgeous. They're little tiny ones, some medium ones. I'm not familiar yet with the sizing, SS this, SS that. Now for this I don't need my gloves, I'm going to take my gloves off. Now before I do this, I want to take 
and it has this little thing and I'm just a stickler for detail. I don't know how many times I've gone to look at someone's pictures and I myself would make sure that certain things are cleaned up but some people have a tendency, I mean they don't notice it. It's hard to notice with the naked eye but photos show everything. So I just took a little bit of acetone and being that there's a no white top coat it's not going to ruin the chrome effect but I can get rid of this little tiny little piece from the nail of the extra stamping that I didn't need done. There's also like a very tiny weird snowflake edge here that I don't need. Clean that off a little. Now, before I move forward, I'm going to top coat this. To protect and seal in my stamping design. In. Put that in the light for 30 seconds. It's another thing I really like again about Madame Glam polishes is that they cure in 30 seconds. I think their builder gels cure for 60. Okay. I'd have to check into that to see, but their polishes cure in, in 30 seconds which is fantastic for timing. I'm going to put on my extra set of eyes. These are actually just reading glasses. I don't wear glasses normally, but I like to see all the details close up and I can center the stones properly. So here we have it. Nice and cured, ready to go. There's a little hole in the middle of this snowflake that I can put one of the larger um, crystals. And then there's this one here, it looks like a medium, and then there's two little tiny ones there. So I'm only going to need four. I poured them out, but now I can separate them. And this is not a fancy schmancy. This was, I believe I bought this on AliExpress when I was first starting to make my collection before I learned that they take 45 days. Oh, see, I knew that was gonna happen. 45 days to ship things to you. Then I discovered Amazon and I could hear a chorus in the background. Ah! Love Amazon. I joined Amazon Prime actually had it because of the, um, we watch movies a lot in, my, in our house. We sit down and watch movies together as a family. So I'm going to need a little one, two little ones. One for this, one for this. There's a medium. Two teeny weeny ones. That would look really good. There we go. There's two tiny ones right there. And then I need a little bit of a larger one. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to pick them up with a tool so I can't, can't seem to. Maybe it's my nerves. It's my first video and all. I'm going to go back to the sugaring gel again because it's thick and get my pointy. Stylus. Pick up a generous amount. I'm going to do these 
put a blob on that one. These will actually sit in place until I cure the whole nail. I don't need to cure in between. I'll take a larger one. It's upside down. There we go. And put that in place. I love this tool. Move it around to where I want it to be. There we go. Take another dab. Another little dollop of gel. Again, it has the consistency of almost like a builder gel. Circular motion to spread it out a little. And we'll take a medium one. There's a medium one right there. I think that's upside down. These are so tiny. This is why I need my glasses. <laughs> okay, there we go. Take that one. Put it right there. It's just to give it a little more shine. Bling. Can never have too much bling. And then we will take teeny weeny dollops and we'll put one here. I didn't grab much there. Right there. A tiny one. When I say tiny, they barely show on the end of the picker. The crystal picker. There we go. I'm going to put one more on that last one. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing on camera. I'm not used to it. Zooming in and zooming out just yet. Small dollop. Wipe this off since I'm not going to need any more. A trash can right next to me. And one more tiny little. Tiny little crystal. And it's upside down, so let me grab it the right way. Actually, there's one right here that's right side up. There we go. I don't want to put them upside down by mistake. Now it doesn't want to come off. The struggle is real. <laughs> gel on it and just make sure that my tool doesn't. There we go. Should release this time. There we go. It's kind of hard once you get gel on it. There we go. Four little crystals. I could put one right there, but since it's so close to the tip of the nail, I'm just going to leave leave that one alone and put this top back on this. I didn't do that last time, but I was only flash curing. Put that in there, and while that cures, I'm going to put my crystals back at the end of the video. So that takes care of that, and that nail is pretty much done. Crystals aren't going anywhere. Being that I didn't put a huge amount, there's no inhibition layer, sticky layer. If you want to go over it one more time to reinforce it with the no wipe top coat, you can do that. And we're on to the next. There we go. This one is very straightforward, basically. 
you put some gel. Again, a, a thin layer, much like I did with the thumbnail at the very beginning. You put a thin layer of the gel. You take your assorted sizes and rhinestones. I'm going to pour them out in here. And just place them randomly on the nail. That's how I did this nail. Now that everything is pretty much covered on the nail, what I do is, is with my fingers, I can pinch it together. I'm going to put one or two more at the tip here. Well, you pinch it together and move it to the center of the nail. I see where I can put two or three more, and then I'm done. There's a tiny one. There's one right there. And there's a little tiny spot in the very tip of the nail. No, I don't want those. I want the tiny, tiny one. There we go. Right there. There's a spot right in the middle here. And there you have it. So now I'm going to put this in the, light, the lamp for 60 seconds again. It doesn't continue. So there we go. Now this does have a little sticky layer. So I have a spray bottle. It's not going to damage the nail. It's not going to damage your artwork. Put a little spray bottle in there and let it drip and it'll dry but it takes off all the inhibition layer at least that's how i've handled it that's how i've worked it and leave comments below if you have other techniques to remove the inhibition layer instead of trying to get tediously in between all of those stones again on a real person i may opt to surround the stones with some additional gel or no wipe top coat but on this practice set not necessary move this out of the way and we will show the final look but let me go ahead and push this back on there we go and this is my collaboration set with the Glitter Girls. Well, I think it's really pretty. I think it came out quite festive. 
love all the colors. What do you think? Like, comment, subscribe, share this video. Uh, watch out for my unboxing videos coming up real soon. It's been a pleasure. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.